Hello everyone, my name is Blessing Adishiji. I'm a developer advocate at Circle. In this tutorial, we'll explore the interactive quick start guide specifically designed to help you build a developer-controlled wallet. You can find this guide at the URL as shown or directly from our developer documentation. So what exactly is this interactive quick start guide? Well, it's a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide illustrating how you can create wallet sets, wallets, and initiate your first transaction or without writing any line of code. Think of this guide as your personal playground as it provides interactive environment where you can test API requests in the simplest way possible without needing for any additional tools or platforms. You can also find additional explanations of various concepts used on our platform, thereby aiding your understanding of our wallet as a service offering. Let me share my screen and we'll go through all the steps you need to use the interactive quick start guide. The first step is to create API key. Because we've gone through the introduction, let's create the API key. Before we create the API key, I'd like to explain that the Quick Start Guide operates solely within the testnet environment, not the mainnet environment. If you are unfamiliar with these terms, consider the testnet as your practice playground where you can safely experiment and validate use cases before moving to the mainnet. The mainnet is where real transactions take place, so exercise caution and ensure everything works perfectly or all your functions run smoothly before moving to the mainnet environment. Now to create the API key, the first thing you need to do is log into the console. I'll click on this link that takes me directly to the developer console, or you can use the URL console.circle.com and forward slash home or use that to sign up if you don't have any account or sign in if you have an existing account. I'll navigate to the API section to create the API key. Click on the Create a Key button. That will take us to the next uh, window where we see different types of API key that we can create. You could either create the standard API key or create a restricted key. Restricted key gives access to a subset of APIs. And for this tutorial, we're going to work with Programmable Wallet API. We have other APIs, so we set that to no permissions. You can also use standard API key if you are interested. But for the purpose of this tutorial, use the restricted key and we'll use programmable wallet. Give that read and write. Now give your API key a name. So I'll say test key. Click create key and that should create the API key for you. Understand that you need to copy and keep this API key somewhere safe because you'll be needing that in subsequent steps. I'll click on show and copy the API key and I'll keep it somewhere safe. Now that this step is done, the next step will be to generate an entity secret. Remember to use the next button for navigation. So what is an entity secret? An entity secret is a confidential password required to seamlessly access features of a developer-controlled wallet. Understand that Circle does not store this entity secret and the management, the encryption, and the secure storage entirely rest with you using this entity secret. So to generate the entity secret on the quick start guide, you simply navigate down and select your language of choice. My language of choice is Python, so I'm going to select that and I'll click on the execute button. So that will create the entity secret for me and I'll copy it and store it somewhere safe because I'm going to be needing it in subsequent step. Now that I've completed this step, the next step will be to encrypt this entity secret. So I'll click on the next button again and that should take me to this next page. The first thing you need to do is to retrieve the public key. What is the public key? The public key will encrypt the entity secret we created in the previous step, ensuring that the content remains confidential between you and us. To do this, I'm going to also switch to the Python uh, language that I'm using. I'll copy and paste the API key into this box as shown, and then click on Execute button. That will give me the public key, which I'll copy again, store it somewhere safe, because we'll be needing it in the next step. So now that I've generated the public key, the next thing will be to encrypt the entity secret to generate a cipher text. I'll switch to Python again. The only thing I need to provide is the entity secret that was generated in the previous step. Understand that the API key has been pre-populated into this field for us from the previous step, and I'll click on execute button to get the cipher text. So I'll copy this cipher text Keep it somewhere safe in case I need it for the future purpose. But what we are actually going to do with this cipher text is to register it on the developer console. 
So to register the ciphertext on the developer console, what I'm going to do is I'll navigate to the dev control tab and I'll click on configurator and I'll simply paste the ciphertext right here to register the ciphertext. Feel free to read this information here to learn more about what is actually going on. But I'll click on this register button and that would register the ciphertext into the developer console. And I'll download this file in case I need to reset or rotate the ciphertext in future purpose. So now that we've done that, I'll navigate back to the quick start guide and we've registered the entity secret. We're going to move to create a wallet set. Before we create the wallet set, what is a wallet set? Think of a wallet set as a collection of wallets governed by a unique cryptographic private key. Wallet sets employ what is called hierarchical deterministic settings to enhance the management across supported blockchains. So the hierarchical deterministic settings can enable keys to work in a tree-like structures where parent keys can spawn child keys, grandchild keys, and so forth and so on. Before creating your first wallet set, I like to cover a concept called idempotency. Idempotency is a principle that ensures that one operation yields the same result regardless of how many times it's executed. The idempotency principle comes into play when we have things like network glitches or network error that makes one request run multiple times and prevents us from having duplicate transactions. So let's create our wallet set now that we've explained the idempotency key and also what wallet set means. Create a wallet set. Notice here that the parameters has been filled already for us and I'll switch my language back to Python and then click on execute button. But before I do that, I need to fill in the name of the wallet set and I'll give it wallet one to show that this is the first wallet set. It's a collection of wallets and we need to execute that. Note that the request parameters, the idempotency key, which is unique for every transaction, the entity cipher secret text, and the name of the wallet set have been sent as payload to a post request to the wallet set endpoint. Once the wallet set is created, we're going to store it and save it somewhere because we're going to be needing the wallet set ID. And as you can see, we have the custody type to be developer and we have the name to be wallet one. Also, it's worth mentioning that the parameters that we're using in this quick start guide have been automatically configured to auto-generate different parameters. If you're working with the actual endpoint, you might work with different parameters and you just need to take note of that. For example, the entity cipher text or the entity secret cipher text have been automatically imputed in the request that was sent in this quick start guide. So you just have to take note of that. Another thing I would like to cover before we move to the next step is that when you navigate back to the developer console, you can go to the API logs to see the API post request that we made just now. So if I click on this, you can see the request body that was sent and that has the entity secret cipher text, the idempotency key that was automatically generated and the name of the wallet set. Also, if you take a look at the response body, you see the ID, the custody type, the name, and all the details of the response body that will go back after making the API request. So feel free to make use of the API logs for debugging and monitoring purposes. Back to the quick start guide, and we have our API response. So I'll simply copy it, store it somewhere safe, and because I'm going to be needing the wallet set ID in the next step. Congratulations on getting to this stage. We're now ready to create a wallet. But before we do so, let's understand what address and custody type means. An address is a unique identifier on the blockchain. Although this is unique, but multiple wallets can share the same addresses, especially on Ethereum virtual machine blockchains called EVM blockchains. Moreover, the custody type defines who controls the invocation of the private key. In this example, we're working with developer controlled wallet. So the developer controls the invocation of this private key. If you need to learn more, visit our documentation to get more knowledge on different types of custody type that we support with the programmable wallet. Now let's create a wallet. Now that we've covered the basics, let's impute the parameter again to make requests to create wallet. Notice here that the API key and the entity secret have been pre-populated for us. All I need to do is just select the blockchains that I want to create the wallet on. So this is the Ethereum, the uh, Ethereum blockchain, the Avalanche, and then the Polygon network, which is the Matic Mumbai. 
So selecting all these means I'll create wallet on each blockchain. How many wallets do I want to create? That's the count. So I want to create two wallets for each blockchain. So I'll put two because I want to test how to transfer token from one wallet to the other wallet. I'll put two and then I'll enter the wallet set ID that we got from the previous step. Now that we have the wallet set ID pre-populated, I'll click on execute button and that will send the request where we have the wallet created for us on this blockchain. So if you take a look, we have the wallet created on the Ethereum blockchain and we also have that for Avalanche as well as the Polygon network. So I'm just going to copy this, store it somewhere safe because I'll be needing the wallet addresses in the following step. Another thing to mention is that you could either work with this to copy your wallet ID, copy them from here because you'll be needing that in the next step. But I always prefer to just copy everything from here, store it somewhere safe and then grab what I need. Click on next step to go to the next step. This step involves acquiring testnet funds from Faucet. What is a Faucet? A faucet is a website offering small amounts of cryptocurrency for testing purposes on the testnet. Remember that all the interactions that we have here is on the testnet environment and we talked about that while we started this tutorial. And for this part of this tutorial, we're going to be working with the Polygon faucet. Why are we working with the Polygon faucet? We are going to work with the Polygon faucet because they are more reliable, more than other type of faucets that we have for other networks. And we'll be using this test token to pay transaction fees, also known as gas fees. So we're going to be using the matic that we're going to get from this faucet to pay transaction fees on the Polygon network. So when we are sending token from one address to the other address, we're going to be paying transaction fees to make that transaction happen. So now that that's covered, let's get our test token from the Polygon faucet. Uh, on the screen right here, you see we have two options, the Mumbai matic faucet, we have the USD on Matic Faucet. So we're going to work with the Mumbai Matic Faucet to get Matic token. I have the address of my first wallet and I'll put that here. So I want them to send me 0.2 Matic to this address and we'll see how we send from this address to the other wallet. All right, I got my test token from the Polygon Matic Faucet. How do I confirm this? Let's log in back to the developer console to confirm if this transaction has taken place. In my developer console, we simply navigate to transactions and notice here that we got 0.5 matic and this is the transaction hash and this is also the wallet address. This is how to get test token from the Polygon matic faucet. We've completed this step. We've gotten the token from the faucet Let's go to the next step where we're going to initiate our first transaction. The first thing we need to do to initiate our first transaction is to retrieve the token ID. Notice right here, we'll switch back to Python. Notice here we have the parameters set already. We have the API key and also we have the wallet ID. I'll just simply confirm the wallet ID that we're working with the right wallet. We have the wallet ID, we're working with the right wallet and this is the wallet ID. So we want to get the token balance from that particular wallet before we can initiate the first transaction. So this shows that we have 0.5 matic in our wallet and we got that from the faucet in the previous step. We recommend that you do the same and I'll simply copy this and store it somewhere because we need this token ID to transfer from this wallet onto the next wallet. Now that that's done, I'll simply copy the token ID. In this next step, we need to fill the parameters. So we've got the token ID already. I'll simply paste that. So let's send 0.1 matic from this wallet to this new wallet. So I'll grab the address and put that in. Great. So we have the destination address. We have this address as shown. We send 0.1 matic from this current wallet to the new wallet. So I'll simply hit the execute button and notice that the transaction has been initiated. This is the next step. To validate this transaction, we could either validate using the developer console that we've been using, or we could use the blockchain explorer. So let me show you how to use the developer console. Right in the developer console, we can go back to transaction and we see that we sent 0.1 from this current address or from this current wallet to the other wallet. And you can see that this is a completed transaction. That means the transaction took place already and you can see it as a transfer inbound into the second wallet. You can also use the 
Blockchain Explorer to validate this. If you scroll down, we have different blockchain explorer for different blockchain. We have Etherscan for Ethereum, Polygon Scan for Polygon, and Snowtrace for Avalanche. Because we are working with Polygon Network, we simply click on Polygon Scan. And what we need to do to validate it is the transaction hash or the wallet address. So we'll simply go back to this and we'll copy the transaction hash and we'll put that right here and we'll hit the search button. So that will search for the transaction and we can validate whether this transaction took place or not. See right here that we sent 0.1 from here to this wallet address and this is the amount we paid for transaction fee and all the necessary information to confirm or validate this transaction. I'll head back to the developer console and that runs up everything you need to do to initiate your first transaction using this interactive quick start guide in this tutorial we walk through how to establish your entity secret create your first developer controlled wallet got your testnet token from polygon faucet and also initiated your first blockchain transaction and you validated it congratulations on getting to this step if you have any questions feel free to join our discord channel or check more information in, on our developer documentation my name is Blessing. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.